Welcome to New Life Covenant Church, where we transform people and transform nations. Now, join us for the ministry of the word. Be blessed. All right. Uh, who was not in church on Sunday? Who was not in church on Sunday? Please raise your hand. Raise your hand high. You were not in church. All right. That helps me with my review. Let's go now to the presentation, which is 2 Kings chapter number 2, starting from verse 1. Now, just an advanced warning. In this presentation, there's going to be some very tough things said and certain names called. And so if you are going to be sending a message out on your social media platform, please do not quote me out of context. You must quote me within the context. Ow. God bless you, my Java. Amen. It's so good to see you. Congratulations on winning your seat. Amen. And we pray for your constituency. Glenview South. Your area is affected with cholera. Uh, some of you may not know uh, Apostle Java's wife, Mbai. Uh, this is the late, great Morgan Swangirai's daughter. But also she won her seat. Uh, in the last elections. So we want to say Makorokoto, congratulations, amen. Yes, sir. May God give you the wisdom and the resources to deal with the challenges in your constituency, amen. Uh, so Tari, please talk to, where's Tari? Please talk to uh, Apostle Java's lovely wife, Vimbai, as to how we can direct some of our resources that we mobilize today uh, for cholera. This is a great outlet there. We talked about that today. All right, back to the presentation. It came to pass that when the Lord would take up Elijah into, a, into heaven by a whirlwind, everyone say a whirlwind. a whirlwind, into the heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elijah from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, stay here, I pray you, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. Say that. Say that again. And Elisha said to him, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Everyone say they went to Bethel. Amen. And Elijah said unto Elisha, stay here in Bethel, I pray you, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. Say that. For the Lord said that again. And he said, as the Lord lives, that's Elisha, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now, if you look at verse number two, go to the slide before. So they went down to Bethel. Went down to Bethel. Next slide. So they came to Jericho. There's a difference between went down and came. Verse uh, 6, and Elijah said to him, Stay here, stay here in Jericho, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Say, the Lord has sent me to Jordan. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. Say that again. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they too went on. Say that. Every word, every statement in the Bible has significance and, and uh, uh, meaning. Verse number 70. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. What did they do? What did they do? That means they are a watching church. They're not a participating church. Wow. All right. Father, I pray for your blessing. When you look at 2 Kings, uh, you have the conclusion of the late, of the great 
Elijah, who appears later on in Matthew 17 on the Mount of Transfiguration with Moses. Elijah is a very, very difficult ministry to match. Chapter number 19 of, uh, of First Kings, we have the introduction of Elisha, who is plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and Elijah takes his mantle and hits it on the young man. He leaves everything to follow Elijah. Then he becomes Elijah's servant. And when they get now to, uh, we won't read the verses on because it will take me off. Elijah turns to him and says, when they cross Jordan, he says, uh, what will you have me do for you? And the young man says, I want a double portion of your spirit, your anointing, and so on. Elijah says, if you see me, you can have it. But this process here into getting the double portion is very important. And so it's Gilgal, it's Bethel, Jericho, Jordan, then the double portion. It's never the double portion before that process. Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, Jordan. So, we mentioned on Sunday that it's time for us to speak and address the kings in us, the prophetic anointing, because in our mouth is the birth and death certificate of our future. And once we release a word out of our mouth, it produces life or death. We live or we kill. And uh, it's important that what we say and how we say it brings life. Christ, of course, is the center of all the entire Bible. The Bible, from, Revel from Genesis chapter number 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1 verse 1. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, the word was God. And so the entire Bible is the, Christo is the uh, Christocentric force. That's Christ the center it's the story of the son, Jesus, in his role in the earth in dealing with humanity. You cannot and should not preach anything without being aware that the, the Bible is about Christ. He is the center of all of that. The Bible speaks of the Father. The Bible uh, reveals the function of the Holy Spirit as it pertains to the church and the role of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the comforter will come to re re convict of sin, but the comforter will reveal all, the comforter will reveal all truth. The comforter will reveal all, what did Jesus say? I am the, the way, the, so the comforter is coming to reveal Jesus. The comforter is not coming to reveal his role and function in the Godhead as it pertains to God's universal eternal agenda. The comforter comes to open our eyes and our ears to reveal the function of Jesus in the earth. Always remember that. Always remember that. And so when we look at types and shadows, there are many when we look at uh, metaphors, anthropomorphic terms, they always point to a role of Jesus. And when you look at Noah in salvation and Moses and Joshua, all of them have a piece of a type of Christ. Joseph, yada, 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 Isaac, etc. They all speak of Christ Jesus. Slide uh, number nine. In this Elijah-Elisha thing, Elijah is going to be a type of Christ. Elisha is going to be a type of body of Christ, the church. Jesus on his own, even though he is God in the flesh, was extremely limited to a couple of languages, definitely a geographical space. A Syrophoenician woman came and said, Please help me. My, my daughter is possessed of a very strong devil. And Jesus said to her, I can't take the bread and give it to dogs. 
Hijo de ingua. Because he was limited to a geographical location. He never went to India. He never went to Ethiopia. Uh, he came to Africa a couple of times as a baby. You know, etc., uh, etc. Et but other than that, he was limited to a geographical So Jesus as a person, his miracles were confined to time and space. The body of Christ is greater than Jesus in terms of its capacity and its range. So Elijah is in a space. Elijah gets a double portion. John 14 verse 12 to substantiate what I'm saying. Jesus said the works that I do, which means that I'm doing works. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The works that I do, you shall do also. And greater works than these shall you do because I'm going to go to anger. Now, body of Christ in the earth in terms of functionality is greater than Jesus in terms of functionality. Elijah was phenomenal. Elisha was phenomenal. <laughs> Amen. I wish Auntie Mary was there because she cringes when I use certain words of English. So, the process of the hand over takeover is going to be Gilgal. Gilgal is a wheel. It's the rolling away. Gilgal means a piece of a circle, not a cycle, a piece of a circle, a piece of the pie. Gilgal means a whirlwind. Gilgal was the very first site that Israel crossed over when they came into Jordan and Jerry and uh, Joshua raised up a memorial of stones. The Lord told him, he said, when Joshua said, when your children ask you what meaneth these stones, that was at Gilgal, you, will, you shall say to your children, it is the Lord that has delivered us out of the land of Egypt. Because those 12 stones, how, how would somebody choose a stone? 1900, all right, 7 o'clock, thank you for telling me. Uh, how, how would, of the millions and billions, maybe even trillions of stones in the bed of the Jordan, how could only 12 be selected? What was it about those 12 that gave them the privilege to be part of a memorial? What is it about you that God has given you the privilege to be here tonight? And what is it about me that God has given me the privilege to understand certain scriptures and share them with you. What is it? You can't just live your life in a nebulous way, you know, komsi, komsa. You are part of 12 stones that have been chosen. What is it about Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Andrew, that God chose them? Why didn't he make Nathaniel or, or Bartholomew? Or why didn't he call Nicodemus or Aramathia, Joe, to be an apostle? Iowa. Why did he wait for Paul after he killed Stephen? Why didn't he call Paul during his walk? Why did he stop uh, looking at this guy there, Zacchaeus, and bring him down? Why didn't he stop at other places? As you will see. As you will see. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm privileged to sit next to a special person. Russell has no idea who he's sitting next to. <laughs> he's laughing because he has no idea. So Gilgal, number one, is a place of memorial. Say that. Number two, Gilgal is a place of circumcision. At Gilgal, you get cut. Gilgal is the place of cutting. Gilgal is the place, number three, of removing the reproach. There was a strong anointing on Sunday on dealing with reproaches. On dealing with reproaches. How God removes the reproach. We are all sinners saved by grace. And we talked about champion sinners. Who uh, Paul said, I'm the greatest of the sinners. I'm the greatest of the sinners. Which means there are levels of sinners. If he's the greatest, it means that they are not those that are so great. But he died for all of us. 
They are people that commit sins that are premeditated sins. They are called transgressions. And then there are iniquities that run within our DNA spiritually and physically. And then there are sins. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our... But it's a Gilgal where God rolls away the reproach, removes the guilt, takes away the things where the devil beats you on the head every night. Ah, you have no right for this. You know what you did where and there. And starts naming. Uh, he starts calling the girls. April. Remember April. You remember May. You remember that cheeky June. Uh, you remember uh, Guruve. You remember what you did in the war. You remember what you did in Mutare. You remember what you did in Okombi. So we... <laughs> But at Gilgal, God rolls away the reproach. I don't want to spend time on that. Number four, uh, Gilgal is the place where God cuts covenant. And to seal the covenant, they all brought their tithing. Tithing is a sign that you are celebrating the Passover. Tithing is not a, 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 uh, a salvation issue. No. Tithing is not a salvation issue. Tithing is a quality of life issue. Prove me. Malachi 3.10. Prove me. All of the people who were saying prove me were covenant people. They were Jews. They were covenant people. God told them prove me this day. If you will see that I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will be no room to receive it. In other words, if you don't pay your tithes, you are still saved. But it does have an implication on the quality of your life. That is a wow moment, amen. Who's bad, who's bad, who's bad? Number five, it is at Gilgal where the manna stopped. For 40 years I've been feeding you, for 40 years. Rolling apples, giving you baked chicken. For 40 years, you just wake up, there's a sour with sizzling T-bone. I can feel it even now, amen. <laughs> for 40 years, pizza's rolling for 40 years. Because with manna, you do not need teeth. With manna, you don't need teeth. But when you cross over Jordan and you get to Gilgal, remember this, that on that day, the past is gone. The manna is finished. No more just giving you. From now, you have to learn how to harvest corn. Because if you don't harvest corn, you're going to die of starvation. You have to learn how to cook it. You have to learn how to make recipes from it. Can you believe that sadza is the same thing as maputi? <laughs> I prefer sir. But you can't eat sa, hot sa in a combi because people will be wishing for your food. <laughs> but the thing is that popcorn is maputi. So in other words, when you get to Gilgal and the corn comes, you are going to have to learn how to use that corn and make all kinds of recipes. Corn, bread, wah, 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 palenta stew, soup, what, 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 what. <laughs> Custard is corn. Do you know that? Custard is corn. It's the same thing as other. Kuda. You mustn't just make sa. You must make custard. <laughs> and then Gilgal is the place where Christ manifests himself. Because when Joshua got to Gilgal, the Bible says he met there a soldier, the captain of the Lord of hosts, he met Jesus in his war capacity. Didn't meet Jesus the shepherd. I wa he met Jesus as a warrior. And when Joshua stood there, he says, Are you for us or are you for the enemy? And Christ said, I'm for none of you. I'm for myself. That happens at Gilgal. The place of cutting. You have to be cut. There are things that have to be cut for you to go to the next level. Every level demands a cut. Tanisha, when you do your PhD, Julia, stand. Stand. 
stand. Can you see that shirt? Just turn around. Just look at that shirt. <laughs> Kokoyo tonight, amen. amen. When you start doing your PhD, it's either, ah, I have to watch a two-hour game. Or I have to spend time studying. So there's something you have to cut. When you go to the next level, when you get married, you have to cut your own friends. You can't be going like a Jola boy with all your friends. Ah, going. No, there's a W-I-F-E, Wi-Fi, <laughs> which, is a, which is the same as Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know how many guys have problems in their marriage because they still continue their single habit in a marriage situation. Yes, yes. <laughs> Every level you go to, there are things you have to cut. When you have children, you can't be going, you know, because now on Saturdays, when the children are at sports day, are there things you have to cut? You have to cut shopping with your shorts. I see the, the, the you know, the yuppies that are working Monday to Friday, high octane, high impact jobs. I see them in, in, in uh, pick and pay with uh, slippers, shorts. You can see their legs are white, hairy, because it's, they've never been exposed. But on Saturday, you see them just walking in TM like this here, picking stuff like that. But when your children are now doing sports, they, you have to cut TM. Gilgal is the place of cutting. Say Gilgal is the place of cutting. Hear now the message. Bethel is the place of commitment. The word Bethel is the house of God. It is the place of commitment. The place of commitment. The place of commitment. It's the place where you now come into three levels, the courtyard, 30-fold, the holy place, 60-fold, the holiest of holies are 100-fold. Bethel is the holy place, the place of commitment, the candlesticks in the tabernacle of Moses, the table of showbread, and the altar of incense, the place of worship. It is the place where the corporate anointing of the body of Christ is released. In Bethel, in Bethel, you have to move beyond understanding and you have to come into a place of literal, not just understanding and experience. It is the place of plugging in and committing till death do us part. You are committed to that woman, to that man, till death do us part. Commitment. Commitment. I, I saw... Some of your people's team, I see you don't wear the shirts anymore. Uh, I saw your people's team. Uh, <laughs> there was no commitment into that game. I mean, uh, a, a lower team took you out of the cup. I mean, if we come out of the cup tonight, it's Chelsea that took us out. But uh, Chelsea, you can't take us out. My point is here is that commitment, the difference between the team that thrashed the other team was commitment. If you watch some of the highlights, the 50-50 the balls depended on commitment because, of course, the higher players are thinking about the weekend, they're thinking about their paycheck, they're thinking about insurance, but the guys from the bottom, Lampard's team, they have nothing to lose. They were winning, kicking, yada, yada. It's about Commitment. Chennai could have been anywhere in the world, almost literally. We are here. We are committed here. I'm not wearing my flag today because I brought the, a small bag just with my iPad. And only when I got to the office, I realized I didn't have my flag. That's one of the very rare moments in 10 years I've not worn a flag. We are committed to this country. Don't you never say you have to be committed? <laughs> this is also true of church. Bethel is the place of 
is ancient is the ancient place and the seat of worship. In Genesis chapter number 12, verse 8, Genesis 13, verse 3, Abraham pitched his tent and built an altar in Bethel. The Lord said to him in Genesis 12, follow me, leave your country, leave where you're going, and come to a place where I will bless you. How? You mean you can't bless me here? Not the way I want to. When Abraham left, the first place he went, Bethel, the place of commitment, raised up in Abraham's world, he raised up five altars, which is grace. But he visited two of those altars twice. One of them was Bethel. He started in Bethel, built an altar. That's where you start in the house of God. Then later on, he went back to Bethel to the same altar. Commitment. Commitment. Jacob saw God in Genesis 28. At Bethel, the Lord gave him Mwazo. In other words, blessing in advance. Jacob woke up in the morning and said, Yo! Sounds like Julius Malema now. I didn't know that I was in the house of God. I was here, I didn't even know. But the night before, when he took a stone, which was Christ, put his head on the stone, which means that your brain must be on the stone Christ. When he fell asleep, God jumped into his head. Somebody, a ladder came out of his head. It was seven steps. Good anger. When he woke up that morning, Jacob made a commitment. He said, today I don't have any money. I don't have anything. All I have is a little bit of oil. If you do a study of a little bit of oil through the Bible, it is fascinating, including chapter 25 of Matthew, where the wise virgins had a little bit of oil, just a little. God can use a little bit of oil and impact nations. Jacob took that little bit of oil. That woman took a little bit of oil, and God multiplied it. Jacob took that little oil. And he anointed that stone. What was he doing? The Bible says he anointed my with. So what Jacob did was he anointed his head, acknowledged that Christ is my head. Then he made a commitment. And said, if you bless me in my way, I commit. However long it takes, I'm coming back to this place with my jegumi to this place. I commit. I'm coming here with one-tenth of everything you have given me. And when God got the commitment out of Jacob, because before that Jacob was not committing to anything, when God got the commitment out of Jacob, he blessed him years later. And Jacob lived up to his commitment and came back to Bethel. Say, Bethel is the place of commitment. When Samuel begins his prophetic ministry, God chose him as a little boy. Little boy. At the age of nine, God gave Samuel a national plan on all levels. And when Samuel became the official prophet of God in the day, he built an altar in Bethel. And at that altar, Samuel did his circuits. Be Samuel began the school of prophets. And Amos talks about this in Amos 7 verse 3. It is in Bethel where prophecy comes from. It is in Bethel where you have a company of prophets. Chapter number 10 verse 5 of 1 Samuel. Samuel said to Saul, there are places you are going to go to. When you come to Bethel and the Philistine garrison, it is there you will see a company of prophets. There's a difference between a company of prophets and sons of the prophets. Big difference. All of these are individual teachings which I intend to pursue. I leave for the U.S. this week, just a few days. And then when we're back, I'm home all the way until March. And we are going to be doing specialized teaching, special meetings here, 
for these kinds of teachings, which will be maybe five hours at a time with a few minutes break between hours to teach on subjects like this. Oh, thank you for a few people that appreciate that. It's because of commitment. Some of you at Gilgal are still getting where you need to be cut. Say after me, say, Bethel is the place of commitment. Say that again. What I find in church is very uh, concerning. Where you have people that are not committed. If they have a platform, they'll come. If they don't, they don't come. And I can tell on people that have commitment. Bethel is the place of commitment. You know, in this church, we, as, as a leader, I've been leading this church ah, for a long time. I was just asking Kumalo, Elder Kumalo, when he came, they came in 1985. 1985, they're still here. They're still here. The only time they came out of the queue was in terms of grandkids. They jumped the queue. When they're younger than me, they jump the queue. Don't you never say no jumping the queue. <laughs> I won't even talk to you guys, Zingirai. I won't even talk to you, amen. Commitment. They've been with us through thick and through thin. In the late 80s, the group of guys rose up and accused me of a lot of things and tried to split our church, took a few people, and they exploded. And they had the audacity to ask me, you know, after they had in a, an attempt to split our church, took a few people whose lives are nothing now. Uh, they said, oh, Bishop, help us, you know, we help us buy a bus, and uh, should they help us buy? I thought, you guys, the audacity, causing Chich and I so much pain, telling so much stories about me, lying and causing those stories. Uh, yeah. From that time, I learned about subcultures. Everyone say subcultures. A subculture is where you have somebody in a church who uses you to create their platform. On Saturday evening, I was tired. I got home Saturday. I was sleeping. Chichi had called to say to me, she said to me, I'm leaving. I'm going to call to worship. I said, are you going to call to worship? I didn't even know there was a call to worship. The first time I heard about call to worship was Saturday evening at quarter to six. And Philip and Charlotte Pike are members of this church. They didn't tell me. I'm the father of this house. I'm the leader of the house. They had called to worship, but didn't tell me. They took Dube and others, members of our choir, full in call to worship, never asked me. You guys never asked me. A security team, Albert and that bunch, were serving there as security. They never asked me. There were ushers serving there. They never asked me. They are members of our band that were there. They never asked me. Commitment. We are in a kingdom cathedral program. We have canceled all departments' programs. Oh, you can tell the pikes I'm seeing them tomorrow. I'm not scared of anybody. I've given my life for this church. Not to a subculture. I will not take it. I will not tolerate it. Not now, not ever. We are trying to raise money for kingdom cathedral. You know how much money we have to give this week in cash? It's almost a million dollars. We are pulling here, pulling here. We are under so much pressure. And now we have people that are taking from this, dividing the spoils and the money and doing this. It is not right. We will not take it. This is Bethel. It's the house of God. Led by one of the leading apostles in this continent. Bethel. You have to commit. You have to dig in. Green can never ever say, I'm not a Bismarck. No! Even if he changes his name, he is a Bismarck for life. Once you are born in this house, you commit to the name and to the house. There's Alice, our elder, for years. She doesn't have to come on Wednesday, she's here. In the rest, they are here. You have to commit. You can have any meeting. I just heard that G is doing a concert. He's the son of the house. He never talked to me. I don't want to know. I want to know. He should tell me. 
He should say to me, Baba, I'm doing a concert. For one reason, information's sake. And number two, my blessing. Of course. You can you have the, the Shamba here who is my son for years. He's one of the few people that has happiness every day of his life. <laughs> He's our leading intercessor in this church. He can have prayer meetings by his house. You know, I don't mind. But you are obligated to inform me. Baba, I'm having a prayer meeting at my house. Of course. You can have a prayer meeting anywhere. You have to inform me because this is Bethel, the house of commitment. If you are in the choir and you are raising money on the side, you are obligated to tell us for what reason. Because you cannot use this platform to benefit yourself without telling us. We must know. Are you listening to me? This is Wednesday night. Sunday is going to be even more difficult. <laughs> you think this is tough? We are Sunday. Esther, don't look at me like that. You're not happy? I'm this also. There are churches everywhere. The prophetic word I got in my life before many of you were born. Your name was not mentioned once. My success is not predicated on your name. Ini Bishop Tuda Bismarck. Everyone say Bethel. You'll never get to Jericho without Bethel. It is at Jericho where Bartimaeus touched his garment and was healed. It was at Jericho where the walls fell down. You never get to Jericho without commitment at Bethel. Beth house. El God. House of God. Don't commit, you'll just be a part of the company of prophets. A company. A company of prophets. No name. Ningi, ringi, ringi. Is that Bethel where you move from a company? Sons. Choose. Do you want to be a part of a company? Or do you want to be a part of sons? A company, you have no name. You have no name. When you're sons, you'll always Tanasha be my son. Chakawa, you'll always be my son. Russell, you'll always, blessing, you'll always be our sons. You'll always be our daughters. When you commit, you move from a company to sons of. I was preaching. I did so far, I did so good without rabbit trails. It's the first one. I was preaching for a wonderful organization a few years ago. They wanted to, me to teach them on the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And uh, they had two day sessions on, on the program. So I thought the day sessions were speaking publicly and so on. The day sessions were organized for three hours for me to meet every day with the leader of the organization who was twice my age. He said to me, Bishop Tudor, he said, please teach me on the kingdom. Teach me on the kingdom. He was one and a half times my age. I, I was barely 40. I was barely 40. He was 75. And he knelt and he said, please teach me the kingdom. I want to know. He said, I'm tired of being generic. You know, his medicines that uh, 
the doctors will prescribe, you can't find the actual item, so they give you a generic. And I won't say if they come from a certain country, you're not sure if it's just a sugar tablet or it's the real thing. It's that battle where you move from generic to actual. You cannot, sisters and brothers, buy a Mercedes Benz and then use generic parts. If you can afford a Merc, surely you can afford genuine parts. It's that battle where the genuine parts show up. The battle. The battle. The genuine parts show up. I pray for every one of you. That God will bless you. And I pray that God will put into your heart and into your mind a serious sense of commitment. Bazalwani, we are now going to Kingdom Cathedral. We are going to need committed people. Not side programs without telling me. And then you take it. We need six and a half million dollars in the next few weeks. Every dollar counts. Every dollar. Once we enter the building program, which has begun, and they start putting, I mean, it's 1,040, 1, 1,400 and something holes in the ground. Just over 10 meters. Once we commit to that, we are going to need committed people to stand with us. To say whatever, we will see this project through. Whatever. This is Bethel. This is Bethel. The house of God. The place of commitment. Place of commitment. We are part of a winning team. I pray that God will anoint you and give you grace. Now remember, when you send your message to whoever you are sending it tonight, you must quote context. <laughs> Have a genuine laugh. Stand with me. Let's pray. Out of, the, um, out of the mouth of an apostle, a fig tree lives or dies. Out of the mouth of an apostle. Mark chapter 11. A fig tree lives or he dies. Join hands with somebody that's committed. Ask them first before you just join hands. Until Lizzie, don't just join hands. Ask them. Before you join hands, ask them committed to what? <laughs> Joel. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon you all. Amen.